before we begin the, uh, the formal meeting, we'll have the public hearing. Public hearing is to uh, local law number one. And local law, law, local law number one is uh, to amend local law number one, year 2012, a local flood, local law for flood damage prevention as authorized by New York State Constitution, Article 9, Section 2, and the Environmental Conservation Law, Article 36. We had reviewed this at last month's meeting. And if anybody in the public would like to comment on that, we would take comments on that. A quick synopsis of the, uh, Steve, would you mind giving a quick, just the two points? Yeah, uh, well, the flood map portion is adopting the, uh, the amended maps. Um, it adds somewhere in the neighborhood of, uh, I think, seven miles of uh, mapped uh, stream corridor uh, in the township. Uh, so there will be some more some more area in the land in the township mapped into it or with a you know detailed study uh, flood map um so that's that portion of it we have to adopt the map to stay in the nfip um so that's kind of a no-brainer and then the other two issues we're adding some language to the uh, flood law one was a, a a new substantial damage definition that um would include properties or structures that are damaged at least 25% twice within a 10 year period um, that would allow those structures to qualify for increased cost of compliance insurance so that when those individuals, when they met that 50% threshold, those individuals could apply for and receive um, up to $30,000 extra in their uh, flood claim, their flood damage claim to um, do mitigation on their structure, elevate it, whatever it was that they needed to do. Um, so that was that was that uh, definition, and then um, critical facilities. Um, basically, that that clause says that uh, critical facilities would not be allowed within the 500-year flood limit. Um, and I felt that was important because we don't want to be putting adult homes. <coughs> you know fire stations and you know things of that sort uh, factories that uh, use harmful chemicals anything like that in a flood zone where uh, you're gonna when it flooded would create more of a hazard uh, for the public at large or create more of a burden on uh, emergency responders trying to evacuate for example an adult home or something like that so um, that's it in a nutshell and the impact of not addressing these areas is that the town residents could be banned from getting federal flood insurance. So we had discussed these and these are the ones that we decided to go forward with. If there's no comment, further comment, any comment from the public, then I'll close the uh, uh, public hearing. We'll consider it closed. And I will entertain a motion to pass the resolution <coughs> as presented. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution passed. Then I'll call the formal meeting to order and please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Pastor Larry, would you please? Sure. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of life, and we thank you for the privilege of living in America. We bow this evening, and we just ask for your favor, your blessing upon our presidential election coming up. We pray for your guidance. We pray for our existing president, the House and the Senate, the Supreme Court justices, that you would give them wisdom as they make decisions on behalf of our country. We pray for the governor of New York State and the leadership at that level. We, we pray for our town supervisor, 
that you will give him a sense of wisdom and direction along with the councilmen and, and all the town employees, that you would bless them and protect them. And we thank you for their service to the community. Father, we do pray for our community in general, the citizens. We pray for a sense of restoration as a whole, a sense of healing, a sense of prosperity. And now we just ask in this meeting to follow that you will give these leaders here the wisdom and guidance that would benefit the individuals and the residents of this area. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. You've all received a copy of the minutes from last month's meeting, the uh, April 11th meeting. Are there any changes or comments on that? I'll make a motion we approve them. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Floor time. Folks, uh, if anybody would like to uh, speak to the, the board, please just stand, give your name and address. And if not, then we'll move on uh, to the highway department. Well, I've got a few things, as always. Um, we did have a truck and a, and a used bucket, uh, very little bit, on the uh, auction site. It came off Friday, um, thinking whether you want to accept those bids or not. On the truck, it was a 2012 Dodge uh, Ram 5500 cab and chassis with a nine foot snow plow. The high bid was $22,800. That's sort of in the neighborhood of what we were, I thought we were looking for. And the other was a Rain, Wayne Roy 36 inch dick, ditching bucket with a quick uh, change hydraulic side angle coupler that brought $835. So, in some direction whether you want to accept or decline those bids. Were we going to check? Well, you said Town of Franklin wasn't interested now, right? Correct. But Town of Stanford, Town of Stanford had, yeah. And uh, I did call and left a message this morning, and I haven't heard back from them. Hopefully, we want to wait and check with them for when do we got to let them know auctions international sooner than probably better. in the next couple of days, right. I would think. Yeah. Do you uh, call tomorrow, right, this town? Yeah, I did call them this morning, left a, left a message, and I said I needed to know by by the season. Okay. And I had right, right. right. said, well, like, said I did not check. Interested. I don't know if he called 4 or 5 o'clock. I, I did go back down the shop and check the messages there. He had indicated at the time we'd spoke before that uh, the supervisor thought if they had to do it, they'd have to get a grant or something. But they were looking at a new truck a little bit and talking well over $100,000, which we were, I mean, they must be looking at more of a truck than, yeah. than what we were, too, or that we have here. I'll make a motion we approve the bid. I have Second. Motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? A motion. Both, both bids. Both, both, both bids. bids. Motion passed. Okay. I don't know if you need those for the, as I just printed it off the site. Okay. On that. And with that, I guess the second question is, as I had asked a couple months ago about replacing both of them, come to this point, I don't know what your thoughts are on replacing the 2011. Um, the 2012, when I checked with Robert Green uh, via email, he thought, you know, when were you looking for it? So that to me indicates he's probably just taken receipt of it down there and they've got a few things to do with it, but I expect to see that in a couple of weeks. And then we have the plow and the hydraulics to put on. Um, when we had originally, I mean, it's just a little bit, I'll just do it in round figures of about $55,000 per truck. That's for the truck, the cabin chassis, the plow, the hydraulics, and make it winter ready. So if we had two of those, 55 and 55 is 110,000. In the uh, new equipment line, there's 70,000. So there's a difference of $40,000. Um, we got a little better than $20,000 for this one. I can't guarantee you what we get for the other one, but the other one has a little bit, about 10,000 less miles in the same condition. I would think it should be relatively close to the same amount. And why are we getting rid of for those two? The one that we just um, approved here was yeah. for the 2012 Dodge. The no, no, I know the yeah. truck, but, but why are we getting rid of for them? They're four or five years old. Um, while there's still some value to them, uh -huh. get rid of them or you keep Normally, 
history has shown that once it gets much more than that, you don't get an awful lot to them, but we seem like we put an awful lot of money mm -hmm. into them. And why do we pit. keep the plow on it? Can we recycle the plow? It could or be, it, but or is that's worth probably it? what's worn the most on all of them. Mm -hmm. When you're plowing, it, it's a little bit different than plowing parking lots and right. driveways with that. They, all the, all where all the pins are that hold mm -hmm. it, they're a little bit egg shaped. I guess mm -hmm. we could go back through and weld them and try to, you know, fill them in. I mean, the whole thing is operational. It still works. They work fine, mm -hmm. both of them. The plow truck's taking awful beating. Dang. You know, and they yeah. go every day. The idea was <clears throat> that we would replace them more frequently, the smaller trucks, than we do the big ones mm -hmm. because of the uh, the wear and tear on them. And you get some money out of them, and plus you save, generally uh, speaking, based on the f Fords that we had before, you save significantly by in maintenance costs by turning them over. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, once the, Fords, the Fords are kind of exceptions because we had yeah, a lot of we had major a lot of problems. problems. Yeah. I, I'd like to hold off for another month and bring it up at highway meeting and look at our options and stuff. Mm -hmm. so. and like I said, I don't know what the other ones come. But what we got into between the 2011 and 2012, we got the identical plow. Well, we thought it was the identical plow, but they're not interchangeable from one truck to the other, and that was maybe just a, a misnomer or something. And the other side, I mean, when we bid that in February, um, it's now June, probably be July, some well May, it's probably in the middle of June, so February, March, April, May, June. That'd be probably four months to put it together, and even though it doesn't snow, but I mean, now speaking this May, it would be, if we were to, if we ordered it tomorrow, it'd be June, July, August, September, by the time we get it, pushing with a little bit. I mean, there is some time. I like to make sure we're doing the right thing, but I'd like to keep that. that so if we bring it for a decision next month, that yeah, would give it, it, it just, and that'd give us Showing time. the way this one's coming, you know, and then um, we did take the, the flatbed off that time to get that painted and put back on, and then a little bit of time to, you know, probably a month to, to get it ready to roll, so, so to speak. So it's, that might give you some time to talk to the Sanders, yeah, stuff, Mom. Yeah. Yeah. talk to Stanford, uh, your counterpart out there, and let them know. See. Yeah, we just got 22k for one. Yeah, maybe might be another one yeah. coming up if you're. Like I said, I did call that. and left a message this morning, and I don't mm -hmm. know what went on with that. So from that, um, and I know Patty's aware of that, net, but for summer help um, for the youth between the 18 to 21, um, the two individuals that we had last year both decided they're not coming back. One was had met the age portion of that, but we're looking for. Two youth, 18, between 18 and 21, still enrolled in, in school between labor laws and what the youth employment um, through Delaware County for their reimbursement program. Um, there's a, hopefully there'll be something in the, I know you put something in your column for me, Patty, and uh, I was going to put a, an ad. I have, and you would uh, spoke I with somebody. I put a message on yeah, Facebook I did and, get, and I got like three or four hits or five hits. I did have an people. email the next morning after okay. we had that conversation and came mm -hmm. and I emailed them back and stating that he needed between 18 and 21 I never heard anything he's very interested seems he'd worked for the town of Colchester last summer or something mm -hmm. but I never heard anything more I told him to stop and get either here the town clerk's office or the highway garage and get an application and I haven't heard of anything but mm -hmm. we're still looking for so you want that in my column again tonight if you would yes mm -hmm. As of this, immediately, I have not heard from anybody. Yeah. So, I folks, that maybe quite a few likes on that. People, that, when I said the town of Walton was hiring, I would. Those are parents. Huh? Yeah. Those are parents. <laughs> maybe I don't know. So, <laughs> folks that are might be watching this on the internet, uh, stop by Town Hall or the Town Sheds and find out inf additional information. The other thing, the applications are what we use on the county and go to the county's website and, and, and print off the application there. It's a four page. I know someplace on the Delaware County's website is we use the same application as that. Good. But it don't send it back to the county, send it. Send it. Oh, the state state of of the yes. 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 Another yeah, item we went out for bid on for seed and mulch. Um, this is hope in the past, this is for the hydro cedar. Um, the New York City DEP reimburses us for all that. On the conservation mix for a 50 pound bag of, uh, of grass seed. Just that one, right? We had a bit of $63. What we last year paid was $59.75, so I think that's in line. And for the mulch that we use, um, was $15.50 a bale. That is the same price that we did. Well, normally we get tractor trailer loads and uh, private on 
those are the by the ton uh, um, prices. If we were to just get a pallet quantity, which is one ton of the mulch, it was seventeen dollars a bale. But if we get a tractor trailer load of it, which is twenty two pallets, and we've got I think out of the tractor trailer load last year and some left over, we got four pallets of it left. So the between the town of Walton and the county and, and the rest of everybody else in the county, we've gone through a tractor trailer load and a, a little over eight ton of seed last year. Mm -hmm. um, we only had the one bid and it's very comparable to last year. It's a different different source than last year. We're reimbursed. We yeah. have been, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I've already talked with uh, the Soil and Water who that's administered through and that is it's just a little bit of paperwork. What I yep. do is I'll before I went ahead and ordered it, I double checked to make sure, but I've been told, yes, go ahead, go out to bid. It's just a matter of a little bit of paperwork. I'll make a motion. We approve the bids for the seed and the mulch. I have a motion. Second. second. I have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passed. And that's basically the only thing is what I did is I gave Charlie and also the highway committee has seen this. I went back through, I, I guess I have time on my hands, went back through all the budgets <laughs> since 2005, what were on the website, and I broke it down oh, by line item sorry. for the year and what's on there. That's in the first column. The very top I've got one. is okay. A, okay. and then the DA and the DB, and just what was budgeted each month. And under the revenues, that was either unexpended balances or income from interest or, or whatever this is on the book this is not necessarily what was spent some years have spent more than that and other monies came through but in the very last column is the change in well 11 years of how what the changes were um, if you look in if there's a minus means it went down I think you can figure that out but mm -hmm. I don't know I can go over it line by line but I doubt you want to do that but I put it together uh, just for it shows kind of that we've operated Eagles. very efficiently over the past 11 years. Yeah. Yeah. And because I, I, I guess what spurred that is I did hear more from other highway superintendents of the guys saying, you know, you went and you paved that road. It was always a dirt road. It's going to cost you more and more to maintain and all that. And, you know, after the flood there, we FEMA was very good to us and we were able to pave a lot of the roads that were unpaved or made major improvements with somebody else calling. So I guess, and that was 10 years ago, and it just kind of reinforces that it doesn't take any, in my mind, it does not take any more to maintain a paved road than a dirt road once you get it. It costs you money to get there, but it doesn't, right. that it doesn't cost you any more to maintain them. Matter and fact, also, I mean, in the, less. when I look here at the, <clears throat> at the winter money, I'm going rattling on here, I know that. But between 2005, $563 more. And if you look and see how much health insurance has gone up, those numbers will scare you. Yeah. And, and the I rest of the that. benefits that are on there, that we're still able to function at basically very little. And I know in this year, at the end, it shows um, almost $68,000 more in the DB, but we also, the CHIPS money was increased by 51000 That revenue's not in there, and I don't think it was in last year the last couple years but if you add that revenue in there we're down to to minimal amount of increase in, in those years i just thought it was kind of interesting thank you and i'll be quiet unless you have any questions for me any questions no nope. okay oh, you need to be short yeah oh yeah <laughs> man clerk report um Sorry. everyone should have a copy of my financial report mm -hmm. <clears throat> um after tax season has completed now, I have collected three million seven hundred seventy thousand seven eighty seven eighty five cents. This puts us at eighty nine percent collected, and we will be returning on May seventeenth four hundred and forty eight thousand eight hundred one thirty six of unpaid tax bills. And I've also, um, I want to thank the board for allowing me to attend the um, 10 Clerks um, Association Conference again. I provided a recap of different topics that were discussed um, this year, you know, more so interesting and um, a lot of them have had to do with what's going on within our own community. Um, one of them that you'll find interesting is the cemetery, the problems that we've always faced with the abandoned cemeteries um, that the town had to take over 
you know had been abandoned for years just ideas of how to get funding for them to keep up maintenance um, some of the IT things with malware and um, what they call our um, let me just find it here it's a keystroke malware so just to be aware of that on your home computers as well that they they advise it that it, it's getting quite bad it's a Trojan malware that's out there and it actually follows your keystrokes especially when you log into a bank website so just make sure you're up to date on that and um, one of the other things was exotic pets I did not know this and it just um, scared the daylights out of me anyways because I don't like snakes but New York State <laughs> has three of the world's most venomous state snakes in New York State and that the DEC has um, confiscated and they just basically under the general municipal law article 10 section 209 CC they want residents to be aware that they must register any type of exotic pet and they are having problems with emergency staff fire department going into homes that are not aware that there are exotic pets in there and some of them are getting injured um, from the pets. So that's one thing that I found very interesting. So if they don't register an exotic pet, is there a fine or we um, have yes. to have a law? That's no, there, the New there, York State law. Yeah, it's a New York State law and um, residents should contact the DEC directly and within um, a day or two they will be at the location to see what pets are actually there or they can contact my office who I can then you going the DC Town <laughs> 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 dog control office <laughs> DOG dog control office <laughs> <laughs> exotic dog control yeah. officer but yeah so I mean some of them actually one woman had a venomous snake and the snake actually ended up um, taking her own life and then it was loose within the house so Nice. That's not what I'd go to. So, and also, um, during the conference, I was nominated um, for the New York State Town Clerks Association Regional Director, and I accepted that nomination. So I will now be the liaison between Otsego, Schoharie, Schenectady, Albany, Rensselaer, Columbia, Delaware, and Greene Counties, and the State Association. And this will be a three-year term. They will, I will actually share with another woman from Kinderhook, Kimberly, yeah, Pinkowski. So I didn't learn how to say no. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> so, but it was quite an honor out of everybody that attended and to be nominated for that. I was happy. So, and that's all I've got. Should we say congratulations? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm not quite sure yet. <laughs> I'll let you Our know. Our condolences. Yeah. <laughs> what the heck were you thinking? Right? Yeah. <laughs> so this is talking about crematories. Yes. Um, and the state is not going to be approving anymore in the near future. Is Walton's approved? Um, if Walton got their application, which I think they did through the state, I think they were all approved through the state. But yeah, the gentleman said that they would not be approving anymore. Um, because of the huge emission problems that it's too costly for the cemetery associations to fund them because of the um, emissions and the regulations. All the regulations that go yep. So they're saying now they're backtracking off of that? No, no, it has, it, he wasn't addressing Walton at all. No, no, what I'm, what I'm saying is... What, didn't they the go reason, to have it? The reason why Walton went through it and, and what the state cemetery association had explained to them was that they were no longer going to renew licenses for privately owned crematories they wanted them all to be in cemeteries he did not address the location of them he just addressed as the new york state portion of it that they were not gonna it's probably too costly to enforce checking the filters and everything right. else that that goes with it like you know, when For we review, when we re I review that data, the issue right. is it works very well and there's very low emissions and no odor or anything like that. Right. The problem is is dependent on inspections, maintenance, yeah. maintenance, and 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 private people tend to cut corners to save money, yeah. and uh, and that's what happens. 
Yeah, so, so now they're they're cutting everybody out. Yeah. yeah. So they said that basically he just said he was n they were the state was not approving any more within the near future. Not that they weren't ever going to do it again. Yeah, because it sounded like they were backtracking off of why Walton got theirs to begin with, but but it is already through. You know. Oh yeah, so they're breaking ground tomorrow. Um, that's all I've got. So. Yep. The. Uh, this um, cemetery board, Division of Cemeteries for the state, <coughs> is very thorough and they have a lot of uh, inspectors out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know the private uh, crematory that we use is inspected very regularly yep. and very thorough. So, yeah. so are they going to be grandfathered into this? They've got to be, I would presume. But I mean, they're out there, you know, they like get inspected every three months or less. Right. They said the regulations are quite extent because of the emissions and everything else. Yeah, they're probably costing the state too much for the inspections to be done. And because of that, they don't just, they just want to have any more volume. Yeah. Yeah. Their licensing yeah. fees are pretty good to cover the cost yeah. of the inspections. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. well. Um, the town maintains, well, just mowing. We, we have a lot of problems within the cemetery where stones are broken, but there's no funds <coughs> currently right now. But we go through, actually, mill through Delaware Opportunities has a crew together that he goes out and we use the town, not we, but they use the town lawnmower and go out and maintain um, the smaller cemeteries. And I want to say there's maybe 12 of those. There, there's quite a few. It mm -hmm. takes up most of his summer. I was thinking there were 17 altogether, but maybe not. There's, yeah, I, yeah I, I don't have the number right off the top of my head, but I think there's quite a few of them. Okay. Mr. Code Enforcement. Dog control officer, oh, exotic see. pet animal. Dog oh. control, we're still woefully behind on catching up with past two dog licenses. Yeah. Um, I'm chipping away at them, but um, it's quite a list. We'll keep working at it. Um, I can tell it's springtime. I've done nothing but drive to Delhi <laughs> two or three times a week now with dogs. Um, just went today, as a matter of fact. Thank you very Thank much you. for that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so yeah, things are things are getting a little busier uh, as far as that goes. Um, code enforcement. Oh, let's see here. I scheduled a flood. I'm not even sure how I want to call. It. I guess it's a flood regulation education class for real estate agents. Um, that is going to take place on the 24th at 10 o'clock in the morning um, down at the village hall. Um, uh, again, this is working towards um, reaching some CRS goals and earning us a few more points and doing some outreach and, and speaking with folks. So it's just for uh, realtors. I mean, you've invited people. Yeah, um, it's just specifically geared towards realtors, and and uh, I could probably uh, squeeze lenders in there too. Um, but I really. But this was an invitation only thing and you've invited yeah, people. Yeah, this is basically an invitation only. Um, although I won't turn anybody away who wants to come learn. Um, certainly don't have a problem teaching them. Um, so I got that going on. Uh, just as a reminder, I'm going away next week, uh, first three days for uh, training, uh, flood training up in Saratoga. Um, when I return, we'll be collecting tires May 19th, 20th, and 21st. Uh, the dumpster should show up um, on the 18th. Talk to Walt today and have the spot cleared out. So we will have a dumpster or a trailer. Uh, I'm not sure which yet. Probably Can a dumpster. Um, hmm? Do they have to be Can off the rims? Yes. They have to be off the rims, yes. Okay. Tires. Tires. Oh. We do have the ability to um, break them down. Um, I'm not necessarily offering that as a service, but if we get one out of 20 that needs to be broken down, we can do that. That's not a problem. Um, I just don't want people showing up with a carload of tires on rims because um, uh, that's not the purpose of it. So at any rate, that's uh, from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. daily. Um, in conjunction with that, uh, 
I uh, met with the Walton Pride Committee. Uh, they agreed to do uh, tire pickup for um, elder, elderly or disabled individuals who can't um, find a way to get their tires uh, down to the town hall. Uh, they just need to call here um, and we'll get them on a list and we'll provide that list. They're going to do that on Thursday only at this point. Um, if there's any other groups out there that would like to uh, do some pickup on Saturday or Friday. We shall. Okay. And I have a picture of what well, we're all here. Uh, oh my goodness gracious. What I'm thinking for a possible gazebo, and I wanted to talk to him about it. Maybe I shouldn't do it at this point. I don't know. You tell me, but um, it's got to be something that's that uh, the water can go under. Correct? Correct. Over, See? over. It's got to be through. something already through. approved. It has to go through it. Yeah, Grant. we already, we, we already. Change the yeah. Design. Uh, yeah, we can't right. change the design yeah. of that. So we have to have that big one. We have to have the mm -hmm. one that we submitted for the grant. Mm -hmm. Or not. Yeah, we'll lose the funding on that at this point. The size has to be, you know, general. And water can go under that one that mm -hmm. was submitted. On the, yeah, through, under, it, through, through, it, through, through it. Through it, through it. it yeah. yeah. Correct. Do we have a picture of that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. In my, yeah. Mm -hmm. my yeah. Okay, so again, that's part of your your effort if you'll site plan include the maps. Uh, that brings us back to uh, continuing the discussion of the green space. Uh, I met with uh, Mayor Snow a couple weeks ago on the 29th of April and uh, he explained that the uh, county has offered to go ahead and pay a portion of the water fee that was outstanding that the uh, only portion, portion that he is looking now for the village to pay, I'm sorry, the township to pay the village <coughs> would be uh, $225, which would be consisting of the capital fees for the water. Uh, and that's because there is a water line coming to the green space. And how many months is the capital fee that two for, does that represent? That would bring us up to date. And but it's every forward, quarter? Is it every quarter? 50, yes. So going forward would be $50 a quarter. But I mean, we did, have to pay. did we own it through all of the month, the quarters is what I'm getting at for the two hundred and twenty five dollar. We haven't owned it that long. Yes. Uh, that would be. I have not seen the the bill on, on the two twenty five as to what the breakdown is. That I think that they 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 got a good face movement towards this. Let's just put it away and pay the two hundred and twenty five bucks. It's going to be an ongoing fee. I was going to say. Why going forward, you're going to pay the quarterly fee every quarter. Fifty dollars a month. Well, because uh, there's a, there's a because of there's a water line that's that, 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 that is available to the where is using pay? the gas one. Does the county pay uh, fee for uh, the highway garage for water? I couldn't tell you myself personally. Maybe when we should they look have at that before we go forward. When they have removed buildings, like FEMA has removed buildings, like the houses on. Townsend and North. Does somebody pay the water capital no. fee for those? No, but we but never. There's we no have water to it, so yeah. But we've never requested to have water on that lot. I mean, I. What gets me is, it's not the amount of money's the principal. This mm -hmm. whole deal that that we're going to pay a quarterly fee for something that we don't even need there. First of all, and then if we turn that over to the village, when our time's up, are they going to are they going to bill themselves <laughs> for a quarterly fee? <laughs> You know, I mean, it doesn't, that's going to get paid partially through village taxpayers too, this this quarterly fee, because that's town-wide it's going to get, yeah. am I correct? That's going to get yes. charged on a town-wide Yeah, the village tax, taxpayer so, is going to pay a portion of it. Yeah, so I mean, to, to me, it really doesn't make sense that they're going to charge us a $50 fee. Tell them take the water line out. We don't, we don't need it there, you know? And the mayor I said that. don't ever remember a water fountain discussed. No. Has no, anybody else? No. no. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I cut you off. That's what you were going to yeah. say, that he talked about a water fountain, right? Yeah, does, is there anybody ever remember the town asking for a no. water line to come in? No. no. The only discussion. reason there's we a water line there I don't think because it would be one of those obstructions that would impede the flow of water through the property. 
We did ask for We're trying to avoid for a water, water fountain. fountain. No, not a water fountain, water line. And so, and why did we do that? If there's no building, we put them there just in case. Just in case. In case so, something were to happen in the future, in terms of because we we knew we were going to move forward with the pavilion. But they were not. They were not put in. They were. They were they already. Were, they were. The lines were there. They were just allowed to remain. No. They were there. They were extended. Actually, well, is the that line, what the, the sewer line was actually cut back because the sewer went out the back of that building. Okay. Um, so that was cut back to where about where we thought the pavilion uh -huh, was uh -huh, going to uh -huh. go. The water line came in front of the building, and that was extended back to that same area. And is that what the town trucks and equipment did? No. No. What was that? That's another that water was, line. That was, that, to, was to help, that was to help the village to the, for the laundromat there, for the new owner for the laundromat. Which. So who did the water line on the green space? I don't know who if that was done through the contractor or no, the, the work or the village. village. I think you know, the village. The village water them. department did it at the request of the town. Uh -huh. it, it wasn't in our best interest to have a piece of property with no water to in case. I mean, we talked about possible fire hydrants around it or whatever. It might not be a I don't recall idea. that discussion. I don't recall that probably discussion probably. either. I gotta tell you, <laughs> but yeah. if we requested it, because there's no I reason mean, why. You want water on that property from the Could we have a water fountain? Fire from the street for, for well, a fire hydrant. You've got fire hydrants all over the place, including right across the street from it. Yeah, I mean, the and a you know a one inch water line isn't going to feed a, a fire hydrant anyway. Um, but here's the way I'm looking at it and approaching it. Um, I, I did some research in preparation of us getting together and talking about what we could or couldn't do down there, and. Um, I looked at the language in the deeds from the FEMA buyout properties, those properties you're talking about in 9606, whenever they were bought out, house was demolished, county owns them. Um, in those deeds, the, the restrictions in there basically say you can, you know, you can use it as a parking lot, a, a recreation, whatever the case may be. It does allow for a public restroom. Mm -hmm. um, why it does that, I don't know, but um, it does allow for a public restroom. We're not pu public restroom. And I know that there has been at least some discussion <coughs> that I've heard, you know, between either the green space and the other Water Street property reclamation area, um, and ultimately depends on what we do down there. Our options are limited for all of that area. Uh, we either uh, reclaim it as floodplain and let it grow back a wild, or do something recreation oriented down there. That's kind of the <coughs> um, And one of uh, some of the discussion was, you know, can we have a bathroom somewhere down there? Um, if we're going to open up to the public and have it, have it so that you can go play, you know, whatever field hockey, basketball, whatever kind of fields that you have down there. If that's what was going oh, to happen. Oh, you mean back? You're not talking about the green space. No, we're not. Talking, we're talking out back of there. Um, um, you know. <sighs> One of the if we did something like that, provided that kind of an opportunity, would it make sense to have a bathroom down there? And that's why I kind of got digging into all of this. So, you know, ultimately, the uh, utility infrastructure is there if that's what we chose to do moving forward. So I guess, okay. you know, one of the one of the questions that we as the committee would need to figure out is, do we want to do that? Mm -hmm. Where does it make sense to put it? Mm -hmm. Water Street side, or, or you know, river side of Water Street, around the green right street, behind the smoke ship. Yeah, <laughs> you know, whatever the case may be, and, and then at that point, yes, we we want to do that. Okay, let's leave that in infrastructure there. No, we don't want to do that. Let's get rid of it and get rid of the issue. That's kind of how I'm looking at it. I think we've already created the issue if we asked for it, but I don't remember that discussion. But we also never made that to remain forever undevelopable. So the point was is to prepare it in the event 10 years from now, it's no longer in the floodplain because of all the other work that's being done and it could be a suitable property for- Okay, but we don't plan on owning it for that long either. And the village is looking at us turning it over. So then the village should have been who is 
paying for that, but we own it now. But I mean, then we're getting, we're gonna pay. We paid to get it done. We're gonna pay the capital fee, and then we're gonna turn it over to the village to be developed at a later time. Yeah, we're paying six hundred bucks a year for a property that's gonna be theirs eventually. I mean, that, that, that's that's without the usage. This usage, is there a meter attached to that thing? To the line? I got a thing. Would it, would it, would it, if, the, if, if it was going to be put into use, yes, there would be a meter. Right now. Isn't there a, a, a hand pump or something like that over there now? I think no. it's just a capped pipe. I can't, it's just a capped pipe, okay. Yeah. I saw something blue sticking out of the ground there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my recommendation would be that we table this until we find out what they charge the county to make sure the county is paying over there for the water across the street. Uh -huh. and you mean at the at the uh, county highway garage? <coughs> because they have a bathroom there. Mm -hmm. So you know, theoretically speaking, that would uh, be like this building here. Then that when we do pay, we do pay water here, bill. and I think we paid water. We did pay a water bill. I'm sure at the old yeah. highway garage. Yeah, in fact, that's mm -hmm. one of the things that the there, mayor so. gave me was a copy of the old yeah. water bill that stopped when. Mm -hmm. the well, and those have down. bathrooms, and I understand yeah. that, and they're right. using water. Right, right. I, mean, right. I, I don't have any problem with that at all. The thing is, is that I don't remember anything about a water fountain. Did you talk? What, did we talk about a water fountain? No. Okay, I, I didn't remember anything about a water fountain. I've never heard anything about bathrooms until tonight's discussion. I don't think. The green space is a place for bathrooms. I mean, you're surrounded by businesses. Um, I, I just don't, I think the minimum, we're trying to put the minimum there that we can. I don't know why we right. would even consider putting a bathroom right. there. I see your point in on the other side, you know, further down and stuff. But if we ask to be, have it put in there, then I guess we should pay it. But, but at the same no time- But there's no usage to it. Right. If it's capped, the, I think but there's it, no point in it if it's if it's if it's step if it, farther down the line. If it remains capped, for example, and given the fact that the structures that were there already had sewer and water, okay, it's not like they ran ten miles with the pipe, okay? And if they're capped, we shouldn't be paying nothing because we're not using it, nor it's going to be used. Right. And it's gonna be their property eventually anyway. Now if uh, if it's going to be used, then it will be a meter, and then that's and then the whole if thing. If it's going applies, to be used, I right? absolutely agree. We should pay it. I, right. But if it's yeah. going to, if it's just there for the development in the future of the property, which in all probability is going to end up being okay. the villages, then I don't see why we pay a capital fee. Here's here's my thoughts on it. One, if the town asks for it, then yeah, we should. And Doc, I think maybe the better comparison would be if I move out of my house mm -hmm. and I'm not using water because it's vacant. Mm -hmm. I still have to pay that capital fee. No, but you still have a house. Yeah, there's exactly. nothing there. Uh, yeah. there's, that's the difference. There's, there's no it's building. Still there. So, uh, but nor there any are, potential but use. Their empty lots um, in the village still get, if the water and sewer are available, that is, they run down the street in front of them, um, if it is available to them, then they get a, a water capital service charge. So, but, who gets but, that for those? FEMA buildings that were built, turned down. I can't answer that. Like those, we don't have water going to them. But the difference but is that's private property. This was Correct. a joint effort between the village and the town. This whole project was supposed to be a, a joint effort right. with the town doing the majority of the the financial part of it, you know, and the planning and stuff. So, I mean, it's to, it's to benefit the village residents. It benefits them under flood insurance. So I would think the least they could do is, I mean, we're not like, I agree, if we were using water down there, that'd be one thing. Mm -hmm. Just have them lines down there to charge us a quarterly fee. And I said, it's not, not that that's going to break us. No, it's not that it's going to break us. If we, if we eventually turn it over to them, are they going to charge themselves for it? I mean, it's going to be the same situation. So why are they charging us for it? And that, and even if they did extend them lines, we went down there, Walt has the bills, he could show us what we spent helping them run a line to that laundromat, which I was told, I don't know if it's true or not, but I think we need to find out that they were supposed to get reimbursed for. So if we, we spent man hours and machinery and- That the village which, was supposed to get reimbursed yeah, for? From the owner of the, the laundromat? laundromat yeah. yeah. So we, we expended the money and the I don't village know. got reimbursed is what you're thinking might have happened. I don't know if that's what I was told that when somebody asked about it, they said they were gonna get reimbursed, so. Um, the thing is, you know, I want the village and the town to work together. I do too. I definitely want this village and the town to work together. But this 
is kind of getting mired in minutia that doesn't need to happen. The whole building coming down was supposed to be a grant that we both went for, blah, 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 blah. We did it. We, we ended up paving the parking lot that we did not have to. It had nothing to do with what was the, the thought of that, that the paving the parking lot was, had to do with something. Oh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> flood. Uh, flood drainage. Yeah, and basically it had just nothing had to, to do with flood drainage, no, paving the parking lot, did it? Yes. It has to do with you put in the green space drain, this is essentially what it is, and all of the paved area in the neighborhood you want angled towards that. That was the whole purpose of repaving the parking lot. So that all of but that But we didn't repave family dollars parking lot. Well, no, because that's private property. Well, that's that. village property, but we repaved their parking lot. Which is but which it's was higher, to, it's to higher, help Walton. It's higher ground. I I understand what you think. And the, do, the family dollar is, is higher ground than the than the green space, so it drains into it already. But the paving of the parking lot yeah. was in cooperation for the village and yes, the town yes, to yes, come yes, together yes. to do this, this project. Is, there's no, there's, there's no. not a lot of cooperation in fighting over this water bill, is what I'm yeah. saying. No. It's, it's not a lot of money, it's not going to break us, but it's not going to break them either. Yeah. And, you know, like I said, this is supposed I don't, to be I don't have right. a problem with paying the 250 bucks because they cut it by half, okay? But I do have a big problem. But well, the other half was just the, uh, the I understand fees that whatever it was. They okay? weren't really cutting going anything forward, the fees. Paying forward, going forward, I think is an issue. Um, but. So shall I approach the mayor with the option, we'll pay the 225 but we don't want it, we won't continue paying the uh yeah I don't, I don't we'd, rather, we'd rather not i mean i guess if they force a hand we have to but just tell them when we, if they ever want that land they're going to reimburse us for it. So. Well, uh, <laughs> and as a long-term investment because like you said doc uh, mm -hmm. it's uh fifty dollars a quarter yeah so there's uh two hundred dollars a year yeah uh, how much would it cost to pull that line up Right. Mm -hmm. And what is the point of doing that? It to is. not pay $50 a quarter? There's no point in that. It's just that this is, should be a spirit of cooperation between the town and the village, and that's what I w would like to see. I think everybody would like to see. This is not helping that. If we need to pay the 225 to get past that, fine, but I think paying $50 a quarter is not. I don't we know already, why we would we have to. put in 40 some thousand dollars to pave that parking area that they didn't have, that they should have been their responsibility. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. They so I don't think we greatly, should be arguing over $225 or $50 a month. They greatly improved the commercial uh, value mm -hmm. of the laundromat and the buildings behind. Well, and because just as well in general, because you have parking. a place to park that isn't exactly. full of potholes and, and et cetera, and it looks yeah. better. There's just nothing about it is a bad thing nothing yeah. about this is a bad thing but it just seems that we're mired in this little amounts of money when we're talking thousands of dollars yeah okay i'll entertain a motion if you're amenable to paying the village 225 dollars with the understanding that there'll be no further quarterly fees unless we decide to use the water unless Mm -hmm. unless, uh, unless our things, our plans that change, way, that we way. we're going to yeah. use their water. If we're mm -hmm. going to use the water, then that's a different story altogether. I agree, but okay. No, I'm I think we should that. do the 225. You want me to make the motion? Please. I'll make the motion. Okay. Got it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Oh my motion God! Passed. So much that I was spent with this. We got more to do. We have to have a meeting. Okay. Um, for the community. Before we go into the executive session, I'd like to give a, a recap on where we are on the reassessment. Uh, as some folks may recall, letters were supposed to go out to the property owners last month, no later than last month, detailing what the town records, what the assessor's records show for their property and give them a chance to respond. And originally they were supposed to, the company was supposed to start their data collection this month. That has not happened. Uh, we've talked to the uh, company. They're having trouble interfacing with the software up at the county. It's the RPS, that's the assessor software. Uh, Fran Zuzovich, our assessor, is going to have Telcon with the, uh, data, the company that scanned our property cards and the company that's doing the reassessment. He's going to have a Telcon with the telephone conference with them tomorrow to try to explore what's going on. Uh, he did share with them that we are not happy. Uh, 
with the way things are progressing. Uh, I was very disappointed that they did not give Fran or myself a call saying we're having difficulties. We're not going to meet the delay is. Yeah. They uh, did say that this should not impact the long-term goals of having things ready uh, by next next spring. Uh, they'll start now. Their plan is to start data collection in July. Haven't they worked with the software before? Isn't this like the software for not through Delaware County? But in other counties, they use the but same software. But isn't it the same right? software? There, <laughs> um, it is the same software. Uh, I'm just not sure why they're having trouble connecting to the software. Is my question. And, and to be honest with you, I don't know. That's, and that, that's one of the frustrations. If you're having trouble, talk to me. Talk to our assessor. Let us help you solve what the problem is. Right. Whether it's a problem, a technical problem interfacing with the. Delhi with the real property office there, or if it's they're short of manpower up there, uh, up in Delhi at Delhi, mm -hmm. uh, we don't know. Do and we know if they've been in touch with the county with Mike Spansky or Spansky? Yeah, yes, they yes, have. Yes, Mike okay. has talked to him. Okay, uh, I didn't. I saw him today. I didn't want to engage with him on that until I had a better feel for what's going on with the company. So after. Uh, I feel like maybe we were just put on the so we sure that this is the problem is on the company side, or is it with a, with the county allowing the company to interact with their software? No, we're I don't not know. sure. We don't know. Okay. That's that's what we'll so find before out we start pointing fingers, let's find out where the problem lies. Yep. Okay, because it could be either one of them. And that's what you're doing. Exactly. Yep. Uh, letting them know here's here's what we see as a problem. Mm. And questioning why it hasn't happened yeah, and what can why we do when to help solve when is it going to and so folks in town are, are looking at you know we had the briefing in February the timeline that was given to them has slipped a bit uh, they're going to uh, folks are asking them probably y'all are fielding questions too what's the status of it so that's where we stand now okay uh, committee reports I don't want to say the term green space again in this meeting, okay? <laughs> <laughs> the, I have nothing for that. Do you, we don't have anything for that right at the moment. We're going I to have a meeting. I have discussed with Greg in the, um, the stream gauge. Yes. And we were, he was pretty busy at the time and he said, well, I'll get back to you. So okay. we are moving forward on that a little bit. He said, I have some ideas how we can get there. Great. And so that's where I left it with him. Okay. So I do have, well, I've got the floor, um, something that I would like to address, and I'm not really sure if where we go with it as a town board, so it's just something for discussion. I attended the last meeting of the village board, at which time the uh, mayor indicated that if they can't get the signatures from Kraft and Saputo and Domo to go forward, they are still going to move forward with a biodigester. He, I didn't ask him specifically, but one of the other people at the meeting did, what the cost of that other biodigester was going to be, and he didn't get an answer. My concern, I guess at this point, is kind of two-phased, because one, they filed, this person had filed a freedom of foil on all of the materials relating to the biodigester and uh, the information he got back was somewhat sketchy. My interest in this is that what is, because again, because if the village goes bankrupt or decides to dissolve, it becomes an issue for the town. What is the cost going to be for this smaller biodigester? Where are they gonna get the resources to fill it, to operate it? And, um, you know, I'd really like to see the cost, what it's going to cost to engineer it, what it's going to cost to operate it, and what it's going to cost to build it. And what's the nice thing cost that it's going to save Yeah, if they, if they do their they, own energy? They claim it's going to be $244,000 a year. Just in, for their own energy? Yeah. They pay $244,000 a year for electric for the plant itself? Is that That's what, what they claim. Now, I'd they, like to foil all of that information, and I would, I would think maybe the town might be the people to file the foil request. That's where I'm looking at. I thought that Frank had done some of that. 
He has, and it, it was spotty, the information he got back. Right. It was less than, less than complete. Mm -hmm. Is that something that the town can get involved in, request FOIL for this, or is it something I should do as an individual? Or If you come up with documents that you want, I can look at them and give you a definitive answer. Okay. I don't know why the documents exist, because they didn't specify. They just say they're going to go forward with a smaller biodigester without any idea of what it's going to cost or what the engineering is going to be on it. They've already spent $400,000 on engineering. And yeah. They've got budgeted another, almost another 400000 to be spent before the end of the year for the rest of the engineering on this project. Yep. And the village is currently $7.7 .7 million in debt. With the other projects that they have, the bonding that they've got out there. So I don't know if it, if it helps coming at from the town level, asking them to provide this information, or because of the information they provided that I've seen for uh, an individual was less than. I, I don't think it matters who the FOIL request comes from. I mean, the FOIL request, it, it doesn't hold weight. No one knows, you know, someone's requesting it. All right. Um, but it is a, a means to get information. Mm -hmm. Well, we can look into it. Didn't the village? It several times say that if they if Kraft and Saputo and Domo said no they weren't going to do it at all that Correct. it was a dead issue yeah that changed though when the contracts apparently are not going very well with Kraft my my point is that that information was foiled and that information has been reviewed by somebody who has participated in in biodigesters before and that that person strongly recommended that the engineering company be put in question because of the, the numbers don't match. So uh, I think that we're, we're running into almost a million dollars <coughs> of expenditure before anything is done without even justifying what the million dollars are being spent mm -hmm. because the, number, the numbers don't match. Okay. So that information has been foiled, received, and analyzed. Again, we'd already wrote a letter to the village expressing our concern. Uh, we did a bigger one. Maybe we need to write another one saying that we are, I mean, it's okay if you want to foil the thing, but, but I think that this, this has been done already and has been analyzed and it's already known that the numbers don't jive. So where the problem lies needs to be answered. And s somebody is blocking that information. Um, so I think uh, we definitely, we should put our concern out. Okay. Um, if, can I put this in, can I put this in context? So folks that might be watching this on the internet mm -hmm. are gonna ask, uh, why, about that. why is the town getting involved in this if it's a village issue. And, and here's the reason, the explanation of that. Yeah. If, heaven forbid, the biodigester goes forward, it's developed, and it proves to be unprofitable. If it gets to the point that it is so unprofitable that the village dissolves, and they always have the, they have the right, they can dissolve whenever they want to. If they dissolve, then what becomes, that bond is still out there, that's still owed by the taxpayers. Mm -hmm. In my discussions with the Association of Towns and the uh, Comptroller's Office, in that case, the bond that is outstanding for the failed digester would be much like a water district, where if the village were to dissolve, the township, people living out in the township would not be paying water bills, just the water. The folks that are actually using municipal water would. There would be, most likely, there would be a bond, uh, a bond, uh, the local, the village people would pay off that bond. So would it hit the people out in the township? Indirectly it would because that would cause their property taxes to go up, make their property less desirable to, for people to buy a home in the village when they're saddled with a large debt from the biodigester. Mm -hmm. And so that, that is why 
So does it impact the township directly? It does indirectly because the village is part of the town. If the village would go away or if the village just stayed there and suddenly this proved to be unprofitable it was, it, and the village continued, folks would be less likely to want to move to the village mm. because of the high taxes to pay off the failed digester. Businesses would be less likely to want to come to Walton and open up in the village because of the high taxes associated with that. So Correct. because of that, yes, it is a town interest. If the village can do what they want with their money, it's not their money, it's the taxpayers' money. We're looking out for all the taxpayers in the township and that includes the folks in the village. So for the folks that may be watching this, that's why the town is concerned because strategically, long term, we have to look out after the folks in the whole township, which includes the village. Well, given the thank the you, present, Charlie. It's a very good way to explain that. Yeah. Given the the present fiscal state of the village, did you say the village can vote to disband at any time? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The village can disband. Uh, for instance, Downsville. There is no you know, Downsville's there. There, the town of Colchester, and other communities have and this was one of the most recent ones that uh, mm -hmm. five or six years ago they disbanded mm -hmm. i mean i knew they could disband but i didn't know it was on their vote yeah it's on their vote the town has no say in whether or not a village disbands court is the same way the village could vote to dissolve the village court and then the town court would absorb that so Len, getting back to your, uh, mm -hmm. let me, uh, we, we send a letter, let, let's, we will send a letter to uh, mm -hmm. the, the village uh, asking them specifically to provide financial data mm -hmm. uh, and, and hopefully we'll get, because if this is going to be, I have not heard anybody saying they don't like the digester. They're concerned about the funding for it and because it's been, okay. It hasn't been very clear, I'll be honest with you, when I was on the town board, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> when I was on the village board, there was a lot of information that I never saw. Thank you to the Chamber of Commerce because the information that you requested, I went through that package and there's a lot of financial data I never saw as a town, as a village board member. Uh, there were letters that I never saw as a village board member. So when I see that now in the township, I'm, I'm concerned. As, as and there was party. a question asked at the meeting about whether the engineering firm would take out a bond to, to guarantee that the biodigester worked, and they flat out refused. Yeah. So that concerns me. It would. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, okay. well, the board's the, permission, the, the, the I'll go ahead and forward the letter. The county IDA is mm -hmm. willing to guarantee it. So. They are or not? I'm not. Right. No, sure, do we have to do right. something with the union contract? Uh, no, I think it's uh, signed and it's signed and so all, okay. all complete. Okay. So, uh, again, for the folks watching the uh, contract with the Teamsters and the Town of Walton, uh, we've reached an agreement. We've signed and we've implemented the new pay raises for them. The new insurance policy had already been implemented. So, uh, we're moving forward on that. That's a three-year contract. If. Uh, there's nothing else with the board. We need to go into executive session. Uh, the first abstract. The abstract. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, again, you've had a chance to review the abstracts. I'll yes. entertain a motion to approve them. As I motion that we approve them as they state. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passed? Uh, and folks, now we're going to go into, uh, I'll entertain a motion to go into executive session to discuss uh, ongoing uh, negotiations dealing with the credit union assessment and the craft assessment. I so move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Passed. Thanks for folks for coming. Thank you.